Eldrazi deck as we will shortly get you into the match. So a flipped Jace on Sheen's Eye, and actually, just as you mentioned, infinite obliteration happening right now. So that's the Memoricide style effect. You get to go through your opponent's deck and take cards out of it. You see how we're post-board here. It looks like he's nabbing the Gaia's Revenges. I had to imagine this is the second time this is being cast here because pretty hard to name Gaia's Revenge in the dark. It appears to be flashback via JSO. I would assume Ulamogs have already been removed from Leon's deck and now Gaia's Revenge also gone. Yeah. I see over on Yong Lee's side, copies of a lot of those colorless lands. He'll, he'll crack a Hendron Archive. Sanctum of Ugin in play, another one in his hand. Actually not legendary. Ugin has many Sanctums. But the Jace, Telepath Unbound, doing work here. See, There are still some threats left in Liang's deck. We saw when Shaheen was going for it, cards like uh, Whisperwood Elemental, still available. Of course, still has Ugin in the deck as well. So we see Explosive Vegetation getting a pair of Forests here. But Sarani's deck is well equipped to handle threats like this. The, the most problematic dimension of the deck is just Ulamog over and over again, smashing lands and wearing down Sarani's ability to win the game. With that off of the, of the table now, with Infinite Obliteration, Leon can assemble some reasonable mid-range threats but it's nothing that Sarani can't manage with counter spells and removal spells. Yeah, I see Sanctum of Ugin, Forest, and Complete Disregard, the remaining cards in Liang's hand. Does have a lot of mana in play. Co two copies of Sanctum in play. Has a Shrine of the Forsaken Gods that's online, thanks to the fact that he has eight lands. But Shaheen is going to do the control thing. He'll cast a Dig Through Time. Just needs probably one, one or two counter spells to lock this one up. He grabs two cards, has a negate as one of them. Looks like scatter to the winds is the other. So there's a pair of counter spells. Basically needs to dodge one draw here. All right, here's Whisperwood Elemental from Liang. So that, that was his shot. He will get that one last creature in play. Shaheen will have to deal with it. He does have an utter end at the ready. So maybe up to the task, but this much at least is good for Liang. So play Whisperwood. He has Blighted Woodland available in, in play along with lands, it looks like, to, av to activate it. And goes ahead and makes, manifests one card off it. Shaheen, play land and pass. Still an utter end in Shaheen's hand. As we go back over to Liang's turn, draw was a forest. In Shaheen's hand, very stacked here. He's got Narsa Transcendent as well. So we talked about those control cards. We'll start to see them come out. Here's an utter end. That'll take care of Whisperwood. Shaheen still has enough mana for Scatter to the Winds. Whisperwood Elemental was sacrificed in response to Utter End. That's why it hits the graveyard and not Exile. For Shaheen, it's pass back, it's Shambling Vent and cracking a fetch land. Yeah, at this point, Sorani's, uh, now that he's untapped with what he has left in his hand, it's just an issue of finding a way to win the game. Uh, the advantage that he's generated at this point and the amount of outs he's cut off in Leong's deck feels like it's going to be too much for Leon to overcome. Yeah, it certainly does feel that way at the moment. You see another another utter end in Shaheen's hand, along with negate, scatter to the winds. It's just to be unlikely for to, for Liang to. I'm not even positive he has enough threats left in his deck to make it through that permission. Yep. Here's Narset. She will plus. Draw another infinite obliteration in from Shaheen. Chase will plus as well. He'll pass. I like the infinite obliterations, just naming crappier and crappier creatures as the next, <laughs> next one gets cast. Yeah, you just kind of go down the pecking order, and you're like, oh, yeah, well, right, what do we have left? Catacomb Sifter, I guess. I guess Jotty Offshoot for the last sure. one. Just get, <laughs> just get them all. I would be very surprised if, if Jotty Offshoot still hits anything. Pro I, I, I doubt it's that'd in the be, deck. That'd be, 
You might name it anyway, though. Just, 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 just send sure, a message. You gotta make sure. Just t tell them that you're getting all their creatures. Looks like a play is available for Leong. It's Hedron Archive. He'll pass. We go back over to Shaheen. Now, remember, he can play Infinite Obliteration twice more this turn if he, if he wants to. I, I think he's going to give it Rebound, actually. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. All right. He's going to cast Infinite Obliteration. So you could do it four times. You could rebound, rebound it with Narset, and then you could flash it back and give it Rebound again, I believe. Yep. This one's going after Whisperwood. Sure. We'll see what else is even there. There's still two Ugins in the deck. There's still some number of Ugins. That's, I don't know if there are other creatures. I don't believe so. I think, we, I think this game is, is actually locked now. We're, we're assuming at this point that the Manifest token does nothing of consequence because it's just been sitting there. And I think Sarani has more answers to Ugin than Leong has Ugins. And that's kind of it. Yeah, Leong just with lands in play. Well, well, he's drawn one Ugin. He's got, you got to try it out. That was one of your only four draws in the deck to do anything. And he, I think he picked up a sideboard at Duress. All right. Something. Unfortunately, Shaheen has multiple counter spells in hand. He has Negate and Scatter to the Winds. So here's a Negate for the Duress. And Scatter to the Winds will hit the Ugin. In the young spot, this, this was your best shot. Yep. Duress and Ugin, but you, you can't ask for much more. That's, a, that's at least some hope. There's Scatter to win. And that, with that, Dong will go ahead and extend the hand. So it is Shaheen Sarani making it into day two. Esper Control taking Green Black Eldrazi in two games. He moves to seven and one. Have some infinite obliterations ready at this point in the metagame if you're going to be playing a, a control deck like Esper. If you're going to go on for a long time, it's hard to hang around. Even though Sarani won game one, the matchup can be very challenging because Ulamog is a challenging threat to answer in time. And the easiest thing you can do is just take it out of your opponent's deck altogether. Yeah. And just, as you mentioned it, that sideboard card, in a lot of decks for Ulamog this weekend, we've been seeing in most black sideboards. And if, if these Eldrazi decks have anything in their sideboard, it's going to be solid mid-range creatures that, that can help out and help bridge the gap. And so uh, Infinite Obliteration, it's very good against Ulamog. It's also a fine answer to Guy's Revenge or Whisper Elemental or whatever other mid-range threats the Eldrazi deck happens to have in their sideboard for matchups like this. See, it, it feels meaningful.